You can save up to $80,000 by utilizing all of these programs when buying your first home. Yep, I added it all up, so make sure you stay tuned to understand the intricacies of each of these programs and how they kind of overlap with one another so you can maximize your benefits. Now, if you're starting your journey on owning your first home, whether it's just looking and browsing right now or just kind of doing your finances, congratulations. And if you want to have a lot of your questions that you're bound to have answered right now, you could do so by booking a call with me using a link that's on the screen. It's right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Or you can click on the link in the description below so we can talk about all the perks that apply to you and how you can benefit from all of this. Simply click on the date and the time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and the question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime Properties TO. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Zen and I own and run a Remax in the greater Toronto area where I help a lot of clients buy, sell, and invest in real estate on top of making awesome real estate content just like this one. So if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there, do me a favor and like and subscribe so I can put more information out there so that you understand what's going on in the market. Now, over the years, a lot of like, first time home buyer perks have been like brought up, they can be removed, they've been added, and they've gotten really, really, really long. So I wanna take this video to kind of summarize all the things that you can get right now, effective as of 2024. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, the land transfer tax rebates. This one is automatically deducted on your final bill when you go buy your home, right? So you just gotta check a box with the lawyer saying that your first time home buyer, you get credited with it. Now, when you're calculating your closing costs, you can just subtract 8,475 if you're buying a property in Toronto. And if you're wondering where the boundaries of Toronto are, I'll put a map on the screen for you so you can make sure. Now, if you're outside of Toronto, but you're still in Ontario in regions such as York, Durham, Peel, Halton. So these are like your suburbs like Saga, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Markham, Brampton, Oakville. Instead of 8475 you get $4,000 off, right? And this does not stack if you have a partner. So it's just that one land transfer tax rebate for one property. And if you or your partner are not a first-time home buyer, you can qualify for half of that. Number two. The first time home buyers tax credit. I would say a lot of first time home buyers generally forget this, right? So the tax year that you close your first home, just make sure you check a box um, when you're filing your taxes to get a tax credit of $750. I'll put a picture of the box and what the line items on the screen for you so that you remember. Number three, the home buyers plan or HBP, or I just call it the RRSP plan. So now you're allowed to borrow 60,000 from your RRSP to buy your first home. So shout out to Resi Faction for reminding me of the change in 2024. Now you can essentially use this money for anything once you have firmed up on a deal because you need the contract, right? So it's a very, very simple form. I'll put it up on the screen here for you can kind of see. It's a two pager and all you have to do is hand it in uh, fit to the bank and then they move your money generally from your RSP to like a checking account or saving account of your choice and then you don't have to pay any taxes on it. Now where it gets complicated is the utilization of the RSP. So that amount of money needs to be in your RSP 90 days before the closing date. So if you haven't already topped up your RSP to $60,000, you should most definitely start doing that once you start looking at properties. So you give yourself some time for to sit in the account for 90 days. Now, if you're self-employed, like, you know, contractor or you have your own business, you should 100% utilize your RSP on a higher earning year because the higher income, the larger reduces the tax bill for that following year when you do taxes, especially at 60 grand of a deduction, right? Now keep in mind, this also stacks with you qualifying for a higher mortgage when you show higher income. So just remember that rolling two year average. Now, if you're just getting started with saving for first home, remember that your RRSP is a vehicle in which you can invest in that becomes tax free. So you can invest in whatever is available out there. Just make sure it's liquid enough come closing time so you can withdraw it. And obviously I won't have to say it, but just in case I will say it anyways, make sure it's not a volatile investment. Now, anyone on title can utilize this program to themselves with their own RRSP. And do remember, you have to pay it all off in 17 years with the first two years being a grace period, meaning you have 15 years to pay it off, which means you have to recontribute $4,000 a year back to your RRSP after the second year. Now, number four, the first time home savings account or FHSA, which I'm going to call it for short in this one because it's a very long name. This is the new one and it works very similar like the home buyers plan, the HBP, similar to the fact that it's like, you know, the mechanisms of RSP. 
And this type of account can generally be opened at most banks. And if you have not bought your first home yet, just go open it anyways. You'll see why, just go open it, right? And every year that it's opened, the room, meaning the money you can put in, increases by 8,000. So even if you don't contribute 8,000 in the year you open it and you let it roll on to the next year, you'll have 16,000 the following year, right? Because eight plus eight is 16. And there's a lifetime limit of $40,000 or essentially in five years from opening it, it's gonna get maxed out. And I'll note that even if you don't end up buying your first home, the FHSA can be just moved into the RSP without any penalties, right? So by opening an account, it's just extra RSP room for you to use. Hence, open the account, right? Now the FHSA account must be closed when you buy your first home, you become 71, because I guess you should have owned your first home by now, <laughs> or you've had the account open for 15 years. And you don't buy a home within those periods I just indicated, that amount you would have had in your FHSA can be moved to your RSP. Now, if you have more than $35,000 in your RSP, you can actually move your RRSP money into your FHSA account so you can buy a home faster and you, know, you can draw more money out of those accounts. Because you know, essentially the two accounts are interchangeable you know, without any penalties. So that's kind of why I say it's very similar to the RSP. So you just have to make sure you understand it's also an investment vehicle. Time it with your larger earning years to maximize the amount of benefits you're gonna get out of it, meaning that your tax bill is lower or you get a larger tax credit depending on how your taxes work, right? And between those four programs, there is a combination of $80,000 that I've kind of added up from rebates, tax credits, reduced tax bills, and a whole bunch of stuff, right? And those are the four big benefits that every first time home buyer should know and utilize when they're buying their first home. So make sure you optimize for those things because you know they do kind of make a difference to an extent. And there you have it. Those are the four big benefits every first time home buyer should be utilizing because it can add up to $80,000 per household in the property that they're buying. And it does move the needle, right? Now there are like other programs out there, but they're all kind of useless if you ask me, right? So I'm not gonna talk about it. So if you do have any other questions about your journey to buying your first home, cause let's be real, there's gonna be tons of it. You can do so by booking a call with me using the link that's on the screen. It's right here. It's www.chatwithz.com or the link is in the description below. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one or this one? You know what? Just watch them both. <laughs>